The first question I want to ask is, what is a watchman's job? When I teach over here, I ask questions and I ask them to, and I expect them to answer me. So I'm just going to do this tonight, just like we were in youth. So when I ask a question, I, I'm fine. I expect an answer. So um, it's not a rhetorical question. I, I truly do want an answer. So what is a watchman's job? To watch. Okay. What are they watching for? The enemy? Danger? Okay. So what's a modern day watchman? What would we call a modern day watchman? Who's watching for danger nowadays? Policemen? Military? I'm hearing mumbling over here. Anybody else? Border Patrol? <laughs> Security guards? Yes. Uh, we recently, Brian and, I and Sam recently went on an airplane. And that is the watchmen. They're like, take your shoes off, please, so I can pick your shoes apart and tear the insoles out and, and dig all through your luggage and look through all your stuff and pull all these things out and ask you all these questions. They're a watchman. They expect every person's bag to have a bomb in it, do they not? They just have to do their job that way. They assume everything is bad. They assume everything could blow up. They assume everything could be sharp and stab someone. They assume the worst out of every bag that comes through there so that they're watchful. They expect the worst. When you expect the worst, you're, worst, you're on guard. You pick everything apart. So we kind of have to do the same thing. Ezekiel 3.17, if you guys are ready back there. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. So I'm just gonna kind of start there. We're gonna keep that verse and the watchman in mind as we go forward. Now, like I said, tonight is a review from Sunday. So on Sunday, I talked about a, a, a word of knowledge that God had given me after talking to one of our staff members about how sometimes um, we can kind of lose our way when we're too much time on social media and how too much time on social media can cause us to kind of get an attitude or suddenly when we're for this over here, now we're against it because of something we saw on media. Or, you know, now we're over here thinking, well, maybe we shouldn't have voted for this person after all because of blah, 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 blah. You know, and it just goes on and on and on and it sways our political thinking. It, it sways how we feel about ourselves if we're not careful. So we have to be a watchman within our own spirit. We have to expect the worst and be on guard when it comes to some of these things. And the verse that I used on, on, on Sunday, which is the, the verse that God gave me through this word, was Hosea 4.12. And it says, my people consult a wooden idol and a diviner's rod speaks to them. So other versions um, kind of are funny. They say, my people ask a wooden a piece of wood for advice. I think the message kind of says it that way. My people ask a piece of wood for advice. And like I said before, historians have said that these wooden idols are fashioned in the image of whatever false god was being worshipped at the time. So the Israelites, you know, were kind of following these idol worshippers, and they had a god for everything. They had a god of the sun, god of fertility, god of this, god of that, god of rain, and they would have these little statues made after all these different gods. And the Israelites followed right after this, and they were, they were consulting these pieces of wood. And also they've said that the piece of wood would be kind of worn smooth. Like they would seriously take this piece of wood and just rub on it until it was smoothed out, thinking that they rubbed on this thing enough that they'd get an answer for their questions. So when I was talking to the staff member the other day about this and of kind of how we, you know, kind of getting to get too caught up in the social media, God put this word and this understanding in me and, and gave me the verse and he also helped me to understand that we are no different. We may not have a little wooden statue in our hand, but we have this thing in our hand that we kind of, right? Do you not do this? Flip, flip, flip. And you consult this thing. You ask this thing for advice. What, handheld, imagine phone here? Our device. The diviner's rod is kind of like sorcery. So where this is like the magic ball or the, the, the magic wand or whatever fairy tale thing you want to discuss. But it's right here. It's witchcraft. That they were consulting witchcraft. That they were consulting a piece of wood for advice. And this is how they made their decisions. Well, no longer, no wonder they end up in slavery. Because they didn't know the word. 
They didn't know their freedom. They didn't know who they were. And they were pulled this way one day and pulled this way the next. And before you know it, they're duped and they're, they're goners. They're in, they're in slavery now for years. Generations of Israelites go by in slavery. So I really don't think it's any different for us. No wonder we end up as slaves. No wonder we end up in fear and anxiety and turmoil and all this confusion because we don't know what to think. So that's the review from Sunday. For tonight is part B. Tonight we're talking about the stand. We're gonna take a stand. To take a stand on anything, you have to have information. If I'm gonna stand on something, if I'm, this is my stance and this is what I believe, then I've gathered as much information as I can and this is where I'm standing on based on the information that I have. Now that's the rub. It's like, where are we getting our information from? What are we standing on? As a watchman, I've heard the word of the Lord. He said, You're the pe my people are in danger and you have to warn them. Way, way back in the day, the watchmen couldn't fall asleep. If you've been in the military, did they not have watchmen? Danny, didn't they have a watchman? Did you fall asleep? No. Was it big trouble if you fell asleep? You might not wake up. It was life or death. Even in modern day military, if you fell asleep on watch, they took it that seriously. It's no different for us. When the Holy Scripture says you are a watchman, you have to warn people, it's no different because you might not wake up so I take it seriously, and I'm not gonna harp on this watchman thing too much because I've already taught these guys on watchmen. I gave a whole long watchman message, and I gave that life or death scenario to them. So I'm assuming you all have heard it before, so I'm not gonna go on and on too much about watchmen. But because I take myself seriously as a watchman, that's why I'm warning us. I'm warning the church about what the Lord has put in my heart. Luke 11, 17 says, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined and a house divided against itself will fall. The word of the Lord to the watchman is, your house is divided. On any issue going on right now, if I asked two of you, I would get two very different opinions. They may be similar a little bit, but if we talked about it long enough, we would find a divide. We would find something, we're kind of like, mm, I, don't, I don't agree with that part. Our houses, our house is divided as the church as a whole. There's so many issues right now and we're divided on these things. What are some areas that God's people are divided? That's your chance to answer me. Where, what are some ways that we're divided right now? Doctrine. Come on, y'all. Social justice. Okay, I'm gonna go on one particular because we've all seen and heard about this one. NFL. <laughs> now this could be a touchy subject and could divide us <laughs> right now <laughs> or we could stick with Deanne and hear her out and hear her story and hear what she's got to say. <laughs> and not completely walk out on me. So our house is divided over NFL. Our house is divided over whether they should be forced to stand and sing and salute or whether they should be allowed to, to kneel and protest. The house, the Christian Christ followers are divided even over this. And I know there's a bigger story. I know it. I get it. I know. I understand the backstory. I understand why some are protesting and I understand all of that. But hear me out. At the end of the day, no matter what your opinion of it is, there's a truth and there's an alignment that we have to align ourselves up with when it comes to these things that try so hard to divide. It's not just about NFL. It's about any little thing that Satan can use to get in and split people up. And one true, this is where I got my, this is where my heartbeat comes from this week and this is the fight in me for this week. Is just yesterday, maybe Monday, I saw a post about 
this whole NFL thing from a pastor friend, not a local Evansville pastor, pastor, so don't go there. It was just a pastor from out of town. I'm friends on Facebook with a pastor, and he put on Facebook and said that Christians nowadays are into idol worship and the flag and the national anthem are idols, and Christians need to stop idol worshiping with these flags and anthems. Not gonna go there on the opinion. I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers. Here's my point. One person from his church saw the post and commented on there and said, Pastor so-and-so, if that's how you feel about it, we are not coming back to your church. That's where I'm going with this. Over something about this NFL and the flag and the anthem and stuff, now a parishioner has separated from his pastor. That's hurtful. That's hard. If that's the way you feel about it, then I'm not coming back to your church. Score one for the enemy, zero for us. What are some other ways that we're divided? We've said, we've said social things in general. I mentioned politics. What are your feelings about this whole thing with North Korea? To go to war or not to go to war, that is the question. To support Trump, not support Trump. You know what, all these things have been going on. We could go to war with Korea, and here we are going about NFL, whether they kneel or stand, and whether they honor the flag or not. How are we supposed to respond when these things come up? That's where I'm getting at. What's the Christian response when we see this stuff going on about the flag and about our anthem, about Korea and about politics and about Trump or about any of these things? How are we supposed to respond? I know that there are injustices going on. I watch the news and it breaks my heart. I am not choosing sides and I'm not trying to start a war or protest or anything, I know. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about how do we handle it when true injustice goes on? How do we handle it when these things go on that like, man, we gotta say something. We gotta do something. What is the do? What is the say? This is my turn, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> How could that pastor have worded his post that would have kept peace instead of causing conflict? Shouldn't have said it in the first place. I say if you're gonna say anything that needs to say it has to be the word. Okay, I need Braden and Landon and Sam to come up here. It's time for a little panel, a little quiz. We got Jeopardy going on. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. When I ask, how could that pastor have worded his post to have kept peace instead of causing conflict? And I ask, how do we handle things where there is a conflict, there is an injustice? Man, that was not fair. I watched the news, I saw it, I heard the story, that was not fair. These issues are not right, they're not fair. How are we supposed to handle these things? How are we supposed to handle it over this flag? And what side are we on to salute the flag or it's just the flag, it's just some fabric? What do we do? All these wide ranges of issues, there really are always the same solutions. No matter how big the problem, the solutions are pretty much always the same. So Braden, since we're gonna talk about what we're supposed to do, I wanna ask you a question. How did Jesus respond when Satan was testing him in, in the wilderness? Using the word of God. For it is written. That was Jesus' response for everything that Satan tried to throw at him. The word of God. Okay, you answered correctly, you may go sit down. Yay, Braden. <laughs> okay, Landon. How did Jesus respond when he was being accused in front of all the courts? He didn't say a word. He didn't say a word. Right, he didn't defend himself, right? 
We'll take that answer. Good job, Landon. Sam is last. Sam, how did Jesus act when he knew he was about to be arrested? He prayed. He prayed. Thank you, Sam. Good answer. That's all, folks. We can go home now. We only know what to do. We only know how to handle problems when we do what Jesus did. What would Jesus do, right? Let's play that up again. When he was tempted and tried and tested by the enemy, for everything the devil tried to throw at him to get him to sin, he said, for it is written. And he quoted scripture right back to Satan's face, no matter what it was. He tried to get him to sin. He tried to get him to break his fast. He tried to get him to test God. He tried all kinds of things to get Jesus to mess up. And he said, "Mm -mm, the word says. So right there, if I got something going on and I'm worried about how to handle this flag stuff, well, what does the word say? Let's put someone else on the spot. What does the word say? Does anybody have a word that we can apply to this flag debate? Thank you. Blessed are the peacemakers. Boom. Anybody else got one? Okay. Anybody else got one? There's lots of there's lots of verses. Anybody else got one? What do we say to ourselves with the, with all this anthem flag stuff? In any debate? No. Okay. I'm sure there's the one in there. Just just not coming to me. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Okay. The next one. How did Jesus respond when he was being accused in the courts? He didn't say anything. He stood there and took it. He knew who he was. He knew his job. He knew his purpose. He didn't need to justify it. He had already done everything. He had already done miracles. He had already done everything he was put here to do. He didn't need to defend himself. If I know who I am, if I know my purpose, and you come at me and say something otherwise, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm just gonna keep going and doing what I'm supposed to do. Now we're in the flesh and it's tempting to be like, wait a minute. You know, Brian rides with me and he knows the traffic situations. But I don't go like pound on their window. Hey, you just cut me off. You should say you're sorry. <laughs> I'm just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so sometimes it's best that we just let it be. We know who we are. We did what we came to do. We did our job. We did it right and let it be. Sometimes not saying a word. And though the, this, this, this is the best one right here. How did Jesus act when he knew he was about to be arrested? He knew he was about to get thrown in jail. He knew he was about to get beaten. He knew he was about to get accused of some things. He knew all this was about to happen. How did he react? He just went off by himself and prayed. These are the only acceptable answers. These are the only acceptable answers. When anything comes up, no matter what it is. If we got a word tonight, we go home and on our televisions, uh, United States and North Korea have gone to war. Pray. Quote scripture. What else can you do? Anybody else? What else can you do? What else can we do? We're at war. What else can you do? But get in the word and pray. If you're going to choose a side, it had better line up with the word. How will you know what lines up the word unless you read it? I'm preaching to myself as much as anything else because I, like everybody else, can get confused. Did I not just sit in the car the other day and cry like a little girl and say, I'm so confused, I don't know what God. I did. I was in the car bawling. I was so confused. I just, what? 
I, he got out of the car, we were on lunch together, he got out of the car, went back into work, and when he got out of the car, I was bawling and confused. I, it happens to all of us. I was just overwhelmed. And he was like, Jan, just go home and pray, just give it to the Lord. I didn't even need to get out of the parking lot, and I heard, my plans for you are, ba 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 Stick to the plan, Deanne, stick to the plan. These are the plans that I have for you. Stick to the plan and you will not be confused. And I'm like, okay, and I'm not crying anymore, I'm fine. It's like that, it's the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. And unless, I, unless I knew the word, I would be so confused all the time. I don't know how anybody does it if they're not in the word. How does anybody survive? How does anybody get through life if they're not a Christian, if they don't know the word of the Lord? But they're doing it by the millions and millions and millions. They're trying to get through life and make decisions, hard decisions. My baby has cancer or this or this or this or this and they don't know to pray. They don't know, they don't know who God is. They don't know, they don't know the word. How in the world can we get through life and keep our minds at all if we don't know the Lord and we don't know the word? My, our hearts should break for the people who are all just, just wandering around with no life on in their eyes. They're just existing. And that's heartbreaking. If we're going to choose a side, it had better line up with the word. Like I said other, other while ago, not being unified in the word leads us to choose a side. And then depending on which side you choose is life or death. Which depending on which side you choose could get you in slavery, could get you killed, could get you way off track. And I really, for the youth in here tonight, for you guys, there's no better time than now to get in the word. Because you're going to get, be thrown textbook information. If you go to college, let me tell you what, I have a psych degree. And let me tell you the nonsense and the baloney that is printed in psychology books. It's bull. And I hate it because I had a secular degree so I could go and work a secular job and speak life and speak truth to people in a secular situation. But I hated the classes. I'm like, this is awful. You're leading people astray. It was, it was aw I just couldn't believe it. So if I had not known the truth and who life, who gives life and who speaks life and who the resurrection is and all these truths that I already know. Oh my goodness, I'd be up here spitting Freud out and all these different theories and all this nonsense and y'all be like, stop. But if you guys don't know the truth and you get in here and we're learning about evolution and Darwinism and all these different things, if you don't know the truth, you're going to be a mess, especially if you go to liberal colleges. Oh my word. Is it not difficult? Wow. You've got to know the word. You will be asked to choose sides. You're being asked to choose sides now. I said before, and I want to get to that point of unity. Two sides of unity. Unity with the word of God. We need to be unified within ourselves and lined up with the word of God. And if we're unified ourselves to the, line, to the unity in the word of God, then that means we can become unified with everybody else. If we can become lined up here, everybody, then we just naturally come together and I'm about to prove that. So Brian, come on up here. This is the word. Hello, word. <laughs> and let's see, I need, Sam, you're right up front. Come on up front, bud. And come on up, Joanne. Come on up, Bobby. One of y'all come up, the brave one. Draw straws. 
One of you all come up. Come on up. <laughs> the brave one. Okay. So this is the word of God. Okay. The word of God says, and this is a little long, but bear with me. John 17, verse 20 to 23. This is Jesus' prayer for us right before he died. Jesus praying to God, my prayer is not for them alone. He's talking about his disciples and the people right in front of him at this point. But I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. He's talking about us now. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they be also in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them, you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. I love this portion of scripture. Jesus is saying that they would get it, Lord, that they would get it, Father, that you and I are one and that through this, they can be part of this. That they, through Jesus, that us through Jesus are part of him. That we're all one. He wanted that. And that if we could get on the same page, it says right here, that if we could be in, in, in unity, then the others will see that and will believe in me also. Through their unity, unbelievers will believe because they see the love. Okay, so that's the word we're basing everything on tonight. This is the word that we just read. Okay, so over here is Abby, and Abby thinks that there is no God. Abby thinks that there is no God, there's no Jesus. It was a well-written novel. No, no God. We're here all alone. We came from little fish in the sea who just bumped into each other, and here we are. Okay, and she has a little Darwin fish thing on her, on her bumper. We evolved. Yeah. And this is Bobby, and he's not sure. He believes that there's a higher power. All right. Sure, there's a higher power, but you know, it's God or Allah, or whoever you wanna call him, the big man upstairs. That's what Bobby believes. And Sam Yakel here, he's our EE -E guy, evangelism. And he's out there working the fields, telling the folks like Bobby and Abby who Jesus is. And he's got, all, he's got it ready. He's, he's practiced and he's ready and he's sharing the gospel with all of his heart. And he's out there looking for these two. All right, here's word again. Okay, here is Joanna and she just lost her job. She's not a believer, and she's looking at being homeless in like a week or two, because well, aren't we all one paycheck away from being homeless? So <laughs> technically, she is homeless, okay. <laughs> so this is Joanna, and she's not a believer. She went to Sunday school and stuff when she was a kid, but it didn't really stick, okay? So she's heard the word through Sunday school and Bible school and things like that, but didn't stick. And now she just lost her job, and she's kind of freaking out. Okay, and so here's, okay, what's your name? Clara. Clara. Okay, she is going to school and she's very confused because she does go to church, but it's like kind of, uh, okay, I go to church because my mama makes me kind of thing and she's not got it yet. She's just going and, all right, she's good and she's, she's going to church. She's not rebellious or nothing. She's not into any bad stuff. She's not doing anything wrong. She's just not so sure about church. Okay, so that's where we are. So here's the word. This word I just read says that all of them may be one, just as you are in me and I am in you. So there's one who's supposed to know this and is supposed to carry this to everybody else. He knows the word 
and he can interpret the word and he can share the word. So here's what has to happen. If he's unified with the word, then you can go on over there. <laughs> okay, we're working on the unity. Sam Yakel's in a good place. Okay, so let's pretend that Bobby over here, who believes that there is a higher power, he just doesn't know his name or anything like that. But Sam Yakel, who knows the word and evangelizes and shares his heart and shares the gospel, just ran into Bobby at Walmart. And he shares the gospel with him. So now the word has come to you. Do you believe the word that Sam shared with you? Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. So, hey, welcome. <laughs> All right. You get where I'm going with this now, don't you? Okay, so Abby over here, she's watching because this is her friend, Bobby, and Bobby always said he would never get in with those freaky church people. He said always, I don't want anything to do with church. I don't, <laughs> I read your diary. <laughs> so she's, and Bobby have been buddies for a long time, and she's heard Bobby say over and over, I don't want anything to do with church. I just want, I'm a free thinker. I just want to think for myself and I don't want to be swooped up on all that church culture and have everybody thinking for myself. And now she's got a decision to make because now Bobby has gotten in not only with Christians, but with these holy roller jumpy people who talk in tongues and all that stuff. So, hey, now we've got another, another dilemma. So now we've got Bobby who's like, you got to try it. Just come in. And she sees that Bobby has changed. She sees how excited he is. She has a choice to make. So now these three, Sam and Bobby and the word together, together with the word, come and swoop you up. I'm a believer. <laughs> this is how it works. This is how it works. Okay, mob, come this way. So now we have this one. She's easy picking. She's already kind of got it in her, you know, and she's in a desperate place. So she's like kind of ready and she's searching. She's searching and she says, Jesus, if you're really real, if you're the one who I heard about when I was a little girl in Bible school, send somebody today who will help me. And the word comes with his worker and hands her $200 and says, there you go. And says, God told me to give you this. And suddenly he's answered her prayer. So now we have the word in action. This is unity. So our last one here, her mom is home praying. Claire. God sent a worker Claire's way. Send somebody Claire's way who will speak her language, who will be able to reach her. She tunes me out. She sees me coming from a mile away and she knows mama's coming to preach at her. She tunes me out. But God sends somebody who will be able to get to her and break that wall down and get Clara to understand and open her heart to Jesus Christ. So she says, okay, I will. I'm in. <laughs> Through the love of the word who is written word, the very being and essence of Jesus Christ and God Almighty, through the word, reaching Sam Yakel and him lining himself with the word and the unity of the word. Here he comes and look at the harvest. This is unity. It had nothing to do with any uh, social issues. It had nothing to do, I mean, I could have thrown in some gender difference or all these things, but I didn't go there tonight. But I'm just saying, I mean, the word doesn't go there. Right. I didn't go there because the word didn't go there. The word doesn't say, unless you're this, yeah. or unless you're this. And so Sam can't speak that either. Sam cannot disunify himself with the word because the word never says, if you're like this, then it's, you're excluded. Through the word, Sam knows the word and he knows that all are welcome. Sam knows that there's a place for everybody. That Holy Spirit will clean up what's going on. He knows that. He understands and he's unified himself with the word and is at one with the word and that's all he knows. And so look what he has done. If we line ourselves up, we go ahead guys. Thank you. Thank you.
if we line up ourselves with the word of God and everything in our mind that says, but God, they're living a lifestyle that, no, no, that does not line up with the word. We are required to act in unity with the word and let Holy Spirit take care of everything else. So yes, there are injustices going on. Yes, there are groups of people and pockets of people who aren't being treated right. Let me tell you, the ones being treated the worst are the handicapped people who need wheelchair access. That's the, the worst group that, that needs to protest a little bit more because they're struggling all the time. But we don't hear from them. I'm just saying, there's injustices going on. There, the people are losing their minds. People are killing their children. People are going and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And we wanna start throwing out opinion and getting involved and quitting a church over a flag issue. I'm not condoning what the pastor did. I wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have said it on Facebook and all that. I wouldn't have done that. That's an opinion that should have been kept inside. But now a man has left his church. Over this issue. When the word says unify. When the word says that they will love each other because they know that they're in me and I'm in you and that's all that matters. That was Jesus' last prayer, really. That was his last message and that was the last thing, really, in our word that, like, about us. Because right away he gets arrested. That's where his heart was and that's where he left it. That we would love each other because we are in Jesus and they're one. Jesus and God, they got this thing going, I'm in you and you're in me. And if they're in us too, then the love should be boundless. The forgiveness, there should be no end. The unity, there should be no end. It shouldn't even be on our minds to, div to divide from one another. If we got the word, if we're not lined up with this, if this is not our guide and our North Star, then we are in error. If I think for one moment that this little group over here, they're just blah, 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 and I'm like, uh, at war myself, they just need a this or this, I'm, I'm divided. I'm a house divided. If I see stuff going on, my only response is to get in the word and pray the word and speak the word. I see a conflict, here's what the word says, and leave it at that. Or to say nothing and just stand on the word, stand on what I know, stand on the truth, or to get on my face and pray. If I think I need to do anything other than those three things, I am in error. So, when we got trouble at school, no matter what it is, and we've practiced in our youth group, we have practiced getting a Bible out and finding a scripture for somebody's prayer need. You're struggling with fear of rejection. Well, here's what the word says. We've practiced that. And we've written it on note cards and given it to the friend. The front says, I fear rejection. The back says, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. We've practiced that. No matter what happens. You got a friend who comes up and is like, I'm 15 and I'm pregnant. I think I need abortion. Get on your knees. Keep your opinion to yourself. Get on your knees. Tell scripture. Speak the word. No matter what's going on, the answer's always the same. The remedy's always the same. I will not stand against any group of people. I will not stand against any people protesting. They, they, they're, they're just doing what they feel is right, but I'm like, whether you need to protest or not, I'm gonna pray. You're hurting. I see that you're hurting. I'm gonna pray. I see the injustice going on. I agree with you, that, that wasn't right. Does anybody have anything for injustice? How does God feel about injustice? Hmm. It's in there. There's lots and lots. I, I, I did a little search and there's like lots of injustice verses in there. God is our avenger. 
God is our shield. God will take, make it right. I'm not saying lay over and take it. I'm saying pray first. I'm saying speak the word first. I was being rolled and rolled and rolled by the enemy that day. I was weeping and crying and I'm so confused and I'm a big old mess and the enemy was at me. I spoke the word and it went away immediately. Immediately. I stopped crying and I had joy again. Please don't get me wrong. I understand when things are not fair. Jesus was treated unfairly. He was beaten when he shouldn't have been. His beard was pulled from his face when it should have been. That he should have been high and exalted. He should have been kissed on his face. Not his beard pulled out. I understand that people get mistreated, but Jesus was the model of mistreatment and he handled it the right way anyway. And we have got to because the day is coming when each and every person here and we should be persecuted for our faith. If we're not, if we're not enduring some hardship because we're a person of faith, we're probably doing it wrong. Persecution should come to each and every one in this room or something's wrong. If it hasn't yet, then it will. And it will come in wave after wave after wave after wave as time goes by. The word says so. Get ready to lose your job for Christ's sake. Get ready to not be able to, lo- to feed your family maybe for Christ's sake. Persecution will come. What are you gonna do then? You're still only gonna be able to pray and speak the word. I'm gonna read it one more time. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they be also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory. That's a whole other message. I have given them glory the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Stand. Stand for, not not literally. Stand for unity. Stand for unity. Stand for unity. This is what the word says. Come back, Brian. This is what the word says. I'm gonna stand with it. I'm gonna stand with it. I don't feel like I can unite with this person. Not you, we're married. I don't feel like I can unite with this strange person but they're a Christian, they profess Jesus Christ. We are one. We have different opinion, but we are one. I'm not gonna air my difference of opinion all over Facebook, because then we're not one. If people see that we're divided, if I put on Facebook, now for real, this is my husband Brian, if I put on Facebook and I said, Not mentioning names, but some people do not know how to hit the clothes basket with their dirty pants, and they sure don't know how to wash any dishes. Now, am I united? (laughs) Don't you know who I'm talking about without mentioning any names? And then you're like, ooh, somebody's in trouble. And then there's this. And then it's out there for everybody to see. And then all of you are going, hmm, something's going on at home. And then they're like, I prophesy you better put your pants in a dirty basket. All kind of stuff, all kind of crazy behaviors are coming out of all of you because I said, somebody doesn't know how to do dishes out there on Facebook. You are choosing a a yard picked a team already, haven't you? You picked the team, you picked the side, if that were true. Brian does dishes and he hits the basket with his pants. I'm just saying that for example. Thank you. That's only an example. I'm just saying, if that were true, y'all would have already picked a side. And y'all, stop <laughs> y'all have already picked a side. Because that's what we do. We want to pick a side. 
But what you should do is say, I unite myself with the word. I'm gonna pray for Brian and Deanna. I'm gonna speak truth into their marriage and I speak healing into their marriage and let them be united and let Brian learn how to put his pants in the dirty clothes basket. Amen. You're gonna unite in prayer. That's what you should do. Not pick a team. Do you get what I'm saying? Thank you, guinea pig. No matter what is going on, even if I feel differently about the opinion at the hand, if there's a word about it, I'm gonna stand with that word. If God created every one of us and he loves every one of us and he went to the cross with every one of us, then it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. And if I feel like my mind is going over here and going, I can't pray for that person. I just can't seem to find love in my heart for that person. You are the one in error, not them. Now, when we went to Los Angeles Dream Center the first time, you talk about culture shock. I thought that I was sweet and loved everybody and that I had no trouble. But I'm telling you, when I went out to Los Angeles for the first time and they stick us out there like on Skid Row where no one has had a bath in years. <laughs> if you've been out there, you know what I mean. There's no toilet, so they're going to the toilet on the sidewalk. And you, you find all kinds of lifestyles that you're like, woo, can't unsee that. <laughs> you realize that you have some work to do. Because I'm like, I can't pray for that person. They just use the toilet on the street. I can't touch that. I can't pray for that. I don't know how to pray for this. I, don't, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. No, you are the one with the problem. And when I got back home from Los Angeles the first time, I broke. God, I didn't know I had all this stuff against your people. Take it from me. And I worked and I worked and I worked all this stuff out of me where I thought this person could never get to heaven because of blah, blah, blah. Oh my word. I was full of just silliness. And it had to come out. I was in error big time. And it stunted my ability to love. And it stunted my ability to bring more people into the family. It stunted my ability to unify with anybody. And I sure wasn't in unity with the word. So I went back the next time and it was a lot easier. But we have to unify ourselves with the word and make ourselves do it. Our flesh, our minds, our hearts must line up with the cross. We gotta hug that thing and never let go of it. But we also have to unify with the body, with each other. A house divided will not stand. If we are divided, we're not gonna stand. Okay, one more time, come back up. My guinea pig tonight wasn't here, so I'm using Brian for everything. Okay. Satan wants to distract us with all these things. Like I said before, what are our feelings about the whole thing with North Korea? We're like, what, North Korea, what? Because we're so distracted with all this other stuff. Satan wants no part of us praying for our nation and our leaders and our safety as a nation against all these other things. He would rather distract us with all this other stuff. And he would rather divide us and ruin our testimony as a church and render us useless so that we can't fight the big fights. He's trying to distract us and see it as that. Be the watchman and say, I see something coming afar off and I see it for what it is. It looks like a simple little horse and buggy here bringing some straw into the village, but no, something's hiding in there and I gotta check it out. See it for what it really is. Don't be so distracted with what you see on the outside. It's not the people's opinions and all these things. Look through the mess. See the enemy from afar off. And take action when you see it afar off. People around you, their lives depend on it. The health of the church depends on it. Now, Brian here, the husband, is the watchman. Okay, and he sees someone pull up in our driveway at home who's never been there before, and he's never seen him in our neighborhood. The same cars and people are in our neighborhood because we live in a cul-de-sac. So aren't you the one looking out the blind going, there's somebody new? What are they trying to sell? He sees somebody new 
He sees someone pull up in the driveway and they're like hooded and they look suspicious and they got, you know, uh, something shiny, you know, a knife. He's got a knife. Somebody's, got, Bobby has a story he was telling me. Anyway, this person's clearly up to no good. And he's coming up to the door and Brian said, brace yourself. Someone with a weapon is coming to our door. Do we have time to make a discussion right then and there about how to handle it? Do we have time to say, I disagree, Brian. We shouldn't fight this man. We should just give him all the best silver and just let him go. And you're like, no, we're gonna fight for what's ours. He's got a weapon. He means to harm us. I'm gonna protect my family. That's his plan. My plan is like over here to do something entirely different. Do we have time to argue? He's coming. Thank you. Do I have time to disagree with my husband and have voice my opinion? He's coming. He's coming, he's in the yard. He's coming right up to the door. He's not even knocking, he's just barging his way in. We don't have time to argue and figure things out. We have one choice and one opportunity to make it. This guy's got gun pulled at us now. We don't have time to debate and carry on and figure out who's right, whose opinion is right on how to handle this thief, this murderer who's in our midst. When the man of God and the word says fight, fight. We have a fight on our hands. And here I'm talking peace, I'm talking unity and all this stuff. I, when I say fight, I mean the whole house. If you've seen Beauty and the Beast, that little cartoon, do they not all get in on it? They're all, you know, even the furniture's fighting. They're unified. They don't have time to fight amongst themselves. The thief is already in the door. Thank you again. I've covered a whole range of things tonight. And I'm talking about, you know, how we handle protests. I'm talking about how we handle this whole thing about the flag and the anthem. I've talked about how we handle, you know, disunity in the world. I've talked about how we handle disunity in the church. I've talked about how we handle disunity in our own house. What's the thing that's in common with all that? How you handle it? Bye, y'all. Love you. There's one word, and I've read it twice about unity. There's one Jesus and one example on how to handle everything that I just said. If the thief is already in the house, you got one shot to work together as a team to stay alive. Here's what we're gonna do. Do they not huddle up in football? Do they not huddle up? You go blah, 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 blah. And they're like yelling and carrying on like speaking language I don't understand. But at the end of the whole minute, when they huddle together, Braden, don't they know what's about to happen? After like a minute, they're like, shoo, 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 shoo. okay. And then they're all like this. And every man, every man in his place. We have one minute to huddle together and make a plan. And every man does his part or we're going down. We're gonna lose. One minute. Clock is ticking. We must know the word and we must unite ourselves with the word. We gotta hold on to that cross with everything that we have. We gotta hold on to each other with everything that we have. I will not let anything divide myself from the body of Christ. I must unify myself with the word and we just proved with Sam who was willing to go and gather and speak truth. The one word, here's the word, here's the word, here's the word, here's the word. And then we have one mob of people instead of all of them spread out all over the place. You're either united and you're right standing with God or you're not. You're either working towards unity or you're not. There's no middle ground on this. It's right at eight and we're not in a hurry. This is not a night to lay hands on each other or pray for each other. If you do need prayer for anything, then you can come over here and we will pray with you. We have elders in the house tonight who will lay hands on you and pray for your healing or whatever you have need of. 
but I've given two songs back there for them to play up here. And tonight, I challenge you to be like I was when I got back from Los Angeles the first time, when I said, wow, I have some work to do. There's something in me that can't show love to this. There's an, an opinion in me that's indifference with the cross. There's some thought in me that doesn't line up with the cross. There's some part of me that doesn't wanna unify. We're always at war with the word because we're flesh. We're always at war with what is right. We're always having to make decisions. I have to make a decision all the time to unify with my husband. We may have a different opinion, but when he says, this is what we're gonna do, then I say, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're either right or we're wrong. We're either unified and together with the body and with the word, or we're not. So when they put this song on tonight, whether you come to the altar or not, or sit at your chair, but you need to do some soul searching, and you figure out what part of your mind and what is in you that is not in unity with the word and with Christ and with this, I am in you, you are in me, and we're in them. If there's something in you that's bucking against that, you're gonna need to work on that. And tonight's a real good time to start, amen? Father, we just come together tonight. Go ahead and start the music, guys. We come together tonight, God, and this was a hard word even for me. But Father, we must get our affairs in order. Our house must stand together. We cannot be at odds. We don't have time. The thief is in the midst. We must stand together. We must lock arms together. We must say we're going to do this together as life or death. I cannot stand in opposition to my brother. God, that we have a word, that we have your verses in our mind, that we have Holy Scripture ready. And if we don't know a verse, then all we can do is stand on what we do know and get on our face. Provoke our hearts tonight, God, to respond to your holy word and to the presence of your Holy Spirit. So I would like to open up the microphone tonight for anybody who can come up and pray for our nation and this battle that's going on over our anthem and over our flag and over all these things. If anybody feels led specifically to pray for that, please come up and take the mic from me. Going once, going twice. I'll do it. Father, this issue runs deep. This issue runs deep because there are feelings involved. We've got military men who fought for freedom with that flag before them. When sometimes that's all they could look at was the flag and remember why they were even fighting the battle in the first place. We've got emotional attachment to our loved ones who fought hard battles. And that flag is an emblem and a reminder. And then we've got others who don't see it that way, who are emotional because they're going through some things. They don't see it that way. And Father, sometimes when we see both sides and we don't understand like what is the middle and what is right, what, what, what's the right thing here? God, I pray that love, not judgment or frustration come up within us. God, when we don't know what side and there shouldn't be a side because you are true and you spoke this nation into existence. You moved and it became, you moved and you spoke and people came together and they, and they made their way to this nation for freedom and for a new life and, and to, to be the embodiment of what you desired for it to be. 
Father, this has always been a blessed nation. We've always had your hand of protection. We've always had your spoken word over us. We've always had your covering. So Father, I pray that every Christ follower in here get on their face and keep that covering intact. Though we not turn to idols as Israel did, that we not be so led astray by lights and flashy things and from all this stuff that doesn't matter. Because you are the one who gives us life. Freedom is in you. And Father, I just pray that when I feel irritated or agitated about all these opinions and, and all these different things, God, that I get on my face before you and I say, you're the way, you're the truth, and you're the life. And God, I pray that I remind myself of your word and that I line myself up with it, no matter how frustrated I get. And I say, I'm gonna pray for every side of this story, every person and every side of this situation has a heart and feelings about it and they're passionate about their side of it. God, and I pray that your truth penetrate their hearts, that the one way, the one truth and the one life bring unity and not division. God, that your, your people, that your people of all people should know to humble themselves and pray and to not lash out, to not get their opinion out there and to not worry about being heard, but to make sure that you be heard, Lord, that you are heard, that you are heard. And God, that we not forsake each other, that we not turn from each other, that one man will not leave his pastor because he didn't like his opinion, that we not do that, God, that we not separate ourselves, but that we will pray, that we will pray even for our leaders. Help us, Father, to be upright in everything that we do, that when a world sees us and sees the love that we have, that they will believe. Thank you, Jesus. Who can come and pray for our city? Pray for the city. Father, all I, all I keep hearing you say is heaven is simple, Lord. That, that, we, that when we're heaven focused, the, the, the solution is simple. That our, that our calling is simple is to pray heaven to earth, God. Lord, let us not lose that simplicity, Father. That is still the answer, God. That heaven is still the answer. Lord, so many say, well, it's so much more to than that. So much more complicated. What about this, Lord? Father, you said you gave us instructions. You gave us your word, Father, that we can pray heaven to earth, Lord. So, Father, we declare and we declare heaven in Evansville. Father, you are not done with this city. Father, I am passionate, God. You have put a burning fire in me that I not speak one ill word about this city, Lord. Father, and I repent personally for any time I have looked down on this city in the past, God. Father, our words are power. So Lord, we speak life over Evansville, Indiana. We speak life into the youth of this city, God. Lord, we speak against the spirit of confusion, Lord. Father, the spirit of deception that have deceived the, the children into believing that drug dealing is a viable career choice. God, I hear it every day. I hear it every day. Father, Lord, your heart is to save the city. You're already doing it, God. And I glorify you. And I thank you, Lord, that your heart burns for this city, Lord. So give us your heart. If we look at the problems, Lord, and we hunch up our shoulders, Lord, and we turn our face away because it's ugly, God. Father, give us your heart. Give us your passion. Lord, you're not lacking in it. You're not lacking in love for this city. Lord, we give, us, give us your heart, Father. Lord, let us stand in a place of victory tonight. Let us stand in a place of victory, God. Father, I glorify you for what you're doing in this city right now, what you're beginning in your people, Lord. 
Father, we honor you and we thank you that you're not done and you have so much in store for this city, Lord, and we're excited to see it come to pass in Jesus' name. Has someone come and pray over heads of households? Heads of households, fathers, whoever's the head of household. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for men of God. Father God, I pray you raise up fathers. Father, there would be no more orphan spirits, but Father God, you raise up the men, Father God, the, 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 oh God, the men of God. Lord, you'd bring them. Maybe there are women, Father, and there, there are no men around. Would you raise them up? to be for this child, Lord God, to be a woman of God, to be like a Deborah, to, be, have a, to have a warrior spirit, a spirit that will not quit, Father. We thank you, God, for heads of households, God. I thank you for nuclear families in Jesus' name. Father, God, we come against the attack on the family in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you are raising up young men and women of God to be heads of households, God. Lord, for the young people that they're so focused on getting somebody, getting with their bay and getting with this person, God, that they wouldn't look to that. They'd look to you, Lord God, and they find their completion in you, Jesus. And the God, as they draw closer to you, you're gonna draw them closer to their future spouse, Father God, that they wouldn't give themselves away, Lord, at a young age, but they would save themselves, Father God, for the person you have for them. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the hurting. Father God, that the ones that are doing it on their own, oh God, would they find their completion in you, Lord? Would they find their hope, their, their perfection in you, Father God? Would you make them to be the, the parent, the mother, the father that you've called them to be, God? Lord Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are empowering them, God, to raise up, Father God, to the dads that feel like they can't do it. Father God, would you raise them up to be men of God, warriors? We thank you, Lord God, that you are putting a warrior, a Joshua, a Caleb, I can do it, Spirit. I'm not gonna be intimidated. I'm not gonna have the world telling me and dictate who I am to be, but I'm gonna find my hope in you, Lord God. To the hurting woman, to the mom that's going through college, to, she's raising a baby on her own. Would you give her, Father God, that hope that she can do it in you, Jesus? Father God, that they hear that cheerleader voice, God, that you can do it. I'm in your corner, I got your back. And we thank you, Lord God, for that hedge of protection, Father God, for that protection against the enemy. We thank you for the word. God, I pray the word just fires up in their hearts, God, that this, your word will be in their heart like a burning fire shut up in their bones. And I thank you for doing this, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The last topic on my heart is that we need someone to pray and lead us in prayer for um, unity amongst our, our governmental leaders and um, that we can pray for that. Amen. You know, it really doesn't matter who's been put into authority. All things pass through the Father's hands. And so we can scream and yell and throw tantrums on the ground and throw our opinions and dirty rags around all we want. But the truth is, the leaders are the leaders and they've put it, been put in authority whether we like it or not. So Heavenly Father, we, we align ourselves with the desire of your heart that no matter who passes through your hand, and, and is placed in authority on any level in our lives, including the government. Father, we ask that you would break into their life, that you would break into their heart, that you would break into their mind and they would begin to walk and move in righteousness, that they would start to turn to you and become familiar with your son, Jesus Christ, as a friend, that they would become familiar with the Holy Spirit as a comforter and the one that guides. Heavenly Father, break into Trump even in a greater way than what we have seen. And may the Holy Spirit begin to lead him and show him what it looks like to walk as a righteous man. And may that trickle down and have the effect through all the levels of government, all the way down to the Evansville local authorities here that they would begin to see that there's a different way to do things, that there's a better way to do things. And Father, as they begin to turn towards you and your son and follow the Holy Spirit, I ask that you just give them those that shore them up, that come around and surround them, because they're gonna start hearing stuff from the outside that's telling them what they're doing is wrong, it's not right, 
you are just out of your mind. It won't work. It can't happen. Just give them the support network that they need. Father, just speak to them and tell them, just do it my way and I will show you the wonders of what can happen under your authority by allowing me to have authority in your life. Father, I feel strongly that Evansville is a place where there's gonna be blueprints and amazing things come out of this place, including those that have been put into authority here, that they began to ungrasp the things they're trying so hard to hold on to and control, that they begin to let go of those things and watch you work in amazing ways. Father, we praise you in your name and we give you all the glory in all things. Don't forget about us, Lord. We are still for you and your people still cry out your name. Jesus, amen. We still have time. If anybody has anything on their heart they wanna pray out, we have time. Anyone else have anything they wanna pray out? One more thing. One of the things that's great about churches is that you almost always know they're following the Holy Spirit because you're hearing the same thing across the board. And I'm telling you, less than a week ago, I went through the same thing. And what he brought me to was that all of our opinions and actions that we feel are righteous are dirty rags. And we've been throwing our opinions and our actions down on the ground along with everybody else in the church. And then we sit there with this big rag of opinions and actions that we feel are righteous, but they're not of God. And then we dive in and fight over. And he said, my people have got to stop fighting over dirty rags. So I just wanted to encourage you that you're hearing, the church is hearing, it's across the board. Our family's taken all over the country in different places in different churches. And it's themes for those leaderships that are listening to the Holy Spirit are just so in line. And so he is bringing unity to the church and he's breaking down a lot of issues. I, I don't know, just listen to what's being spoken and take that seed in your heart and then apply it so the soil of experience covers it. So the next time you feel like you have somebody coming against you, just drop your opinion because really it's just a dirty rag. It's just really, it's a dirty rag. So Heavenly Father, I ask that you allow that seed to be covered with the soil of experience, which means I know as soon as we walk out these doors, you're gonna test us in it. So Heavenly Father, I ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to work strongly in those in this building, in this church, in this community, and that the Holy Spirit take over and give that unction and let us hold our tongues and think through it and pray through it and use the word as our guide and speak truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, thank you all for patience with us, and we hope that um, some part of tonight will stick with you and that we act in unity, that we choose, we choose it, we move toward it, being uni and unified with the Word of God and with one another, amen. Love you all, fellowship for a little bit, but not too long. Locks and lights person would appreciate you getting on home. Love y'all. Amen.